Jules, what are you doing? I am uh, measuring out the ingredients for new improved Zikdel, which is the recipe that I developed last winter when I discovered that regular suet dough was giving my bluebirds gout. Hmm. So I decided to increase the nutritional value of it and cut down on some of the things that were not so good for the birds. Now that looks mighty yummy. This is really healthy. It is. Pure lard. Oh, I know, it. I know. Kind of reminds you of that cake frosting that you get in those sheet cakes that you get at the office. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the big problem with this recipe is measuring out the lard and peanut butter because if you don't measure it, right. the consistency won't be right. And there's just no way to get around stuffing it into a cup measure. I feel the same way when I make my lard and peanut butter sandwiches. With the bananas, the fried bananas? If I don't get them just right, the heart attack on the toilet isn't quite the same. <laughs> so don't make me lose count here. I've got five cups of peanut butter, El Chico peanut butter. And now this is my third cup of pure health. You're doing five and five? Yeah. Okay. Yep, five cups lard, five cups peanut butter. And what I'm doing is I'm quintupling the recipe uh, that I that most normal people use. Normal people who have a normal amount of birds in their yard. <laughs> right. Unlike ours, all of our birds look like King Henry the Eighth. <laughs> Bring me my horse and feather. <laughs> that wasn't Henry the Eighth, was it? I don't know. But you know, no, I, I love her not. <laughs> I saw a Carolina Wren out there that gave me this look like it was going to totally kick my butt if I didn't oh, yeah. hurry up and get some suet dough made. So how many days will this last? Oh, this will last a few weeks. We aren't really in high feeding season yet, but once feeding season gets going, I go through a batch like this about every th three weeks or so. So the ingredients are peanut butter, lard, cornmeal, flour, and o quick, oat, quick oats. Quick oats. And the secret ingredient is chick starter, which is okay. a food that's it's a pelleted, extruded food that is designed to help baby chicks grow fast. Okay. So it's full of all kinds of stuff that they aren't going to get if you just use cornmeal. So what I'm doing is I'm substituting the chick starter for some of the cornmeal and uh, some of the flour. I thought chick starter was like a way to smooth talk girls. For you, yeah, I would say. Okay. Um, and where did this recipe originally come from? Um, I originally got it from Carrie Griffiths of Port Orchard, Washington. And I became intrigued when she sent some photos into Birdwatcher's Digest years and years ago of herself feeding this stuff to a male pileated woodpecker from her hand. And this was a wild pileated. And he subsequently brought his, his uh, fledglings to her deck railing in Washington. Mm -hmm. And she would give him a handful of chicks of this uh, suet dough stuff. And he would turn around and stuff it into his baby's mouth. And that impressed me. Turned out she had kind of an interesting situation. I mean, pileated woodpeckers rarely come even to suet feeders, much less to eat out of your hand. But Carrie had an interesting situation in that she and her husband lived outside for much of the summer, and her husband would watch football on the deck. So they got used to this sort of inert form mm -hmm. uh, out there on the deck, and they would come to the feeders. Inert, as most guys are when they watch football. I've noticed, just a personal observation of mine, that there was a lot of inertia going on. Yeah. All right, so. All right, so what are you going to do? You're going to heat this up? I am. I'm going to pop it in the microwave until it liquefies, which surprisingly enough doesn't smell bad and uh, doesn't stink up the kitchen the way melting it over the stove would. In the old days, we used to render our suet in a fry pan and it would make the whole house smell like Saturday night at McDonald's. Let's try three minutes and see what happens. Kind of do it by by ear. Meanwhile, we'll measure out the dry ingredients into this, and that's a lot more fun than... Okay, right now I'm measuring out the dry ingredients, and um, I've measured out 
10 cups of quick oats, which is what you need to use because it integrates really well into the mix. Whole grain oats will not. Um, Chet Baker heard me open up a container of chick starter here and so he really needs to have something to tear up. So we'll give him a box. We need to teach him how to run the vacuum cleaner. All right. All right, so we got 10 cups of quick oats here. I've measured out five cups of cornmeal. Don't worry, we'll give you the recipe. Yellow cornmeal. And uh, next we're going to do 10 cups of chick starter. Chick and what's starter. the chick starter do? This is, an, this, is this ups the uh, protein and phosphorus and all kinds of content of this um, mix because it's a it's a whole pelleted food that's designed for uh, baby chicks to grow real fast so it's good stuff and you put that in there to counter the gout yeah I think that I think that this seems to help keep the birds from getting nutritional imbalances from too many purines in their diet because it's got it's got all kinds of uh, vitamins and minerals so you get this at a feed store Help me keep count. That was, I didn't have to do five of these two cups. That was 11. I really seriously need you to help me keep count. There's two. two. And you can get this at your friendly neighborhood feed store. And be sure to get unmedicated chick starter. Now this is four. Thank you. See, I already lost count. Here comes the last one. Five, good stuff. We'll to add that, to that. We'll add five cups of flour. Well, you really went for the expensive stuff. Value time. Mm -hmm. they, they spelled it right on the package though, this time. That's yeah. So we'll do. This is a two-cup measure. I don't sift it. There's four. Here comes five. All right, now it's real easy to mix the dry ingredients. Where it gets fun is when you gotta mix in the lard. So we're mixing up all the dry ingredients so it's ready to receive the liquid lard. Who isn't ready to receive the liquid lard? <laughs> oh, nice. All right, let's check. Oh. <laughs> Chip Baker, come here and help me. Come here, Chip Baker, help me mix this. It's very difficult. Baker, come here. Kiss the cook. Kiss the cook. Thank you. Ooh, how nice. Thank you. How do you know when it's mixed? When you stop getting flour off the bottom and cornmeal. This is nothing to what I have to do when I get the lard in there. All right. This is where I call in the big guns, and I do mean big guns. 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 The gun shows in <laughs> The gun shows <laughs> Because I can't I can't do a five times batch without a lot of pain. Right. <laughs> pain and torment. So this is the lard and peanut butter that's all mixed together here. This is the no fun part of suet dough making. Of course most people don't make it in five five times batches like we do. But it smells good though. It does smell fabulous. Just like grandpa's lard barn. Grandpa Heine's Cheese Barn. And Lard Hut. Sandusky, Ohio. So the goal here is to get all the dry ingredients uh, mixed in. So there's no more like powder, right? Right, yeah, and you gotta keep going down to the bottom because you'll find mother loads of cornmeal and flour down in there. That's probably our strongest spoon, so if Ragnar breaks that, we're we're out of luck. <laughs> Whoa, beautiful. That's about the consistency you want it. You want a good crumble to it. This stuff is just served in a covered feeder so that it's um, protected from weather and you just serve it crumbled. It's really a bit, probably a bit too loose to fit into a typical suet feeder or, or a log or anything. So we just put out enough for the birds to eat uh, in a few hours. 
Okay. Good consistency. Mm -hmm. The chick starter I find makes a much nicer crumble than um, the original recipe. Well, like the spoon. Yeah. Mmm. Okay. So now we've got it all mixed up. Look at that consistency. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm -hmm. That's what you want. That's why you measure it. It's time to put a little, put this stuff into the containers to store it. This one's labeled Hummer juice, so we'll know that that's suet dough. <laughs> yeah, in the summer I store my uh, concentrated nectar solution in this, but uh, nothing in this recipe needs refrigeration, so you can store this at room temperature in these sealed jars. You know, for a year. It mm -hmm. keeps really it's well. It's not going to last that long, though. No, not around here. <clears throat> Let's put some out for the birds. 